What's up guys? So I wanna make a follow-up video to my last video on the protein sparing modified fast. I had a couple of questions sent to me on Instagram about it, basically just saying, you know, is this the same as fasting? When people talk about fasting, is this going to have those same benefits? And so I just wanted to clarify here for that. Now we'll say before getting into the video, it really does help the channel if you guys subscribe and thumbs up the video, it gets more attention. And I've had a couple of people comment, man, how do you not have more subscribers at this point? Well, you can do your part and help. I would really appreciate anybody who shares the videos, gives it a thumbs up, comments down below, any of that, always super appreciated. So getting into the video, the protein sparing modified fast that I was talking about before was by Lyle McDonald, which was termed the rapid fat loss diet. I think it was the rapid fat loss handbook. And so with that diet, you are doing a very high protein diet. Now, when you look at the studies that are out there on fasting, there's so many different definitions for what fasting is. You know, we have people who do intermittent fasting, which is usually something like 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating, I wouldn't even really call that fasting. I mean, I will continue to call it intermittent fasting because that's what it's known by everybody as, but really that's time restricted feeding. And then you can get all these different distinctions. You know, at what point does it become fasting? Is one whole day fasting? And really, it doesn't really matter except for clarifying when you're talking to people because people might say, well, I've done a lot of fasting. It's like, well, have you really? Or have you just kind of gone a few hours without eating? You know, obviously we all fast throughout the night, hence the name breakfast is breaking the fast. So really what I'm talking about with that, a protein sparing modified fast, it's called a modified fast because you're really not having any period where you have to not be eating. You could spread it out however you want. You just have very low calories. Now the literature is full of data showing the benefits of calorie restriction in general, having a calorie deficit. Obviously, if you were overweight, this can help blood pressure. This can help with diabetes markers, okay? So like HbA1c, fasting glucose, things like that. Cholesterol, there are a lot of benefits to getting into a healthy body weight range, okay? And a healthy body fat. But some people will talk about fasting as this magical protocol that they have where, you know, you suddenly, are, people talk about, you're gonna turn on the body's autophagy, you know, without having any idea what that really means. They're gonna talk about if they're a little bit more advanced than that, you know, maybe they watch like Dr. Rhonda Patrick, they'll say, oh, but you know, if you do this, you fast, and then you, you do the sauna, and you have heat shock proteins. And again, they just have enough understanding to sound intelligent without really knowing what they're talking about. And so this is certainly not gonna be a comprehensive video on fasting at all. There's a lot of great resources out there, and maybe someday I will Will do a more comprehensive article or a more comprehensive video on fasting but this is just to say that be careful when you hear stuff like that for the most part i believe that a lot of the benefits seen when fasting are just by having the calorie deficit yes i do think it's possible that you're having some physiological changes that are occurring that are providing short-term and maybe even medium-term changes positive changes for the individual but it's not like if you suddenly start incorporating a one day fast, you know, once a month or even once a week, that you're all of a sudden gonna boost your lifespan by 25% if that's the only change you make. You know, that's, that's really not validated in the literature at all. A lot of these studies are done on either C. elegans or some rodent data. And it's not that that's not helpful, that's a great starting point. Uh, obviously we can't do a lot of these studies in humans, but I would just be wary when you hear somebody talk about all these amazing magical benefits of fasting, because if they're really looking at all the literature, we see some potential benefits to fasting. I should say we see some clear benefits to fasting. It's more just that the studies don't always have a great control. You know, they'll show fasting compared to no fasting at all, but not just somebody who's in, let's say, a calorie deficit. There are some well-controlled studies that I'm actually a fan of and that I, you know, I've gone through, and I really do believe that there can be some legitimate benefits to fasting. I think especially for people with chronic illnesses, I think with some autoimmune diseases, I think with digestive issues for sure, uh, for no other reason there than, and well, I shouldn't say for no other reason, but one of the main reasons is because it's just giving your GI tract a break, you know, those digestive processes. However, there's some evidence showing that not eating for an extended period of time can cause some GI issues. So again, just don't believe if somebody is talking about how this is a magic diet or a magic protocol. However, if you wanna try fasting, I do think there can be some great benefits. For one, you obviously are creating a huge deficit. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for long periods of time because obviously then you do risk muscle loss. You have some people who would talk about these very long fasts, you know, a week long fast, even as much as 30 day fast, which obviously I would not recommend without some serious medical supervision. But 
they say, well, you're not really going to lose muscle or you're going to get it all back. I think if you're an experienced lifter and you're lifting for a long time, you're strong, you have a, quite a bit of muscle mass. Honestly, even if, if, even if you're, you haven't been lifting that long, I think you're absolutely going to lose some lean body mass if you start fasting that long. But a day-long fast, I mean, you even have guys like John Meadows, somebody who used to always be an advocate of six-plus meals a day, now saying that he thinks one-day fast that he'll do like once a week are completely fine. And that's my experience as well. Having done a number of 24-hour fasts, I feel good. I feel alert. My GI, I've had some significant GI issues, and that feels better. So I actually am a fan. And like I said, you're, it's a great way to create a deficit. Is it how I would recommend, let's say, all of my clients lose fat? No, but I've had a number of clients ask me, what do you think about fasting? Can we try fasting? And I try to give them tips and you know methods to make it bearable, to get through a day without eating if it's something that they're struggling with, or just the best way to go about it in order to have the best results, i.e. mostly fat and minimal muscle loss if using that protocol throughout a fat loss period. So in terms of the benefits, people will talk about this big calorie deficit by having almost nothing there for a day or two, you're gonna decrease IGF-1. If you look at some studies where there's either a moderate to dramatic decrease in IGF-1, even unrelated to fasting, like if they knock that out, you see an increased lifespan. However, I've also seen it where they talk about, well, when they gave them IGF-1 and, and growth hormone, it really cut their lifespan. But you have to consider the context. Some of these studies, they're giving them 100 times the amount of normal growth hormone or IGF-1 that would be produced. And that's just, to me, yeah, I guess it gives you an idea of what an excess does, but it's really not applicable. You know, Nothing that we do is going to increase or decrease our growth hormone to that extent. And that's just you know one example I'm giving. But I do think that there can be some benefits. If anybody is interested in actually seeing articles, um, you know, research articles that are on, like good studies that are on fasting, let me know and, and I'll try to find some of the old ones that I've gone through and post them. Um, but again, I just wanted to put this video out there to clarify because in probably the last five, 10 years, intermittent fasting has really blown up, probably closer to 10 years from intermittent fasting. These longer fasts are getting more popular. I'm not somebody to just say that they can't help at all. I actually do like the idea, um, and if, for no other reason than it can be convenient at times too. Just not eating, go a day or two without eating, and you'll find that you can be, for me and a lot of people, you can be very productive. Obviously, if you're completely sluggish and feeling horrible, that's gonna be a different story. But for me, not having to make those meals can be very helpful, and I get a lot done. I kind of get into a flow state, and I'm able to be very productive, um, but again, Definitely not a comprehensive video here. I just wanted to clarify because somebody asked me if you would see the same benefits on the protein sparing modified fast like rapid fat loss that you would get than when people talk about fasting. My answer to that would be you would see some of the benefits for sure. You know, obviously if you're losing weight, your blood pressure can go down, your cholesterol, your LDL actually might temporarily go up if you're losing a lot of fat, but long term being at the healthier body fat will usually result in lower cholesterol. There are a lot of benefits there. Once you start getting into saying, oh, is, is it going to change my IGF-1? Is that going to help long term? I don't think there's any studies on that in really high protein diets with very low calories, none that I've seen. You know, does that cancel each other out? I'm not sure. And it would very anybody who answers that question definitively for you is going to be speculating to an extent. So I hope that does clarify for you guys. Again, I actually find the topic very interesting because it is a little bit newer than some of the stuff that's you know maybe been talked about forever in the fitness industry. This is at least somewhat newer. So if you do have questions about it or you want anything clarified, just comment down below. Again, any thumbs up, subscriptions, anything like that is always helpful for the channel. So thank you guys.